It's been nice to take a little spring break, but I'm happy to be behind the microphone once again. I've been spending a lot of time behind the screen, and I've never really done this type of housekeeping plug before. But since I've last spoken on a on a podcast, I've got a website now. So I want to share with you guys, jakeloco.card. That's jakeloco.card.co with the two R's, the R, the card.co. And I'm really happy to share some video editing skills that I've picked up. But all that aside, I'm happy to be back. It's episode number 60. We're going to be talking about numbers today with my good friend, Alan Marcus here. And you probably recognize him from Weaving Spiders Welcome. So hello, spiders. Thank you guys for tuning in. And I'm really excited to get to know Alan a bit more and to talk about the many synchronicities, numerological, astrological, uh, let's see, etymological what else can we get into today? But to start off, to honor those rituals that I've set almost a year ago, we've hit our one-year anniversary here. Mr. Alan Marcus, it's good to see you, my friend. When did you start to speak your truth? My personal truth to public peoples? Oh, man. there's There's been a long history of... Um, let me just begin by saying that I kind of have a, a loudmouth aspect to me where if you get me going, I'll talk and talk and I'll fill a six hour space and maybe not say anything at all. And as a child, I was going to the dentist fearing that because I have such a big mouth when my teeth are so compacted in such a way that there's always this uh, element of communication and longing to express things while at the same time not wanting to say anything at all to be the fly on the wall just to observe first it's quite a dance my friend well i gotta tell you i mean as far as getting into your backstory um mm -hmm. what i want to open up with is kind of what i briefly mentioned earlier um i am deeply admiring the work that you put out with weaving spiders welcome i have yet to really explore what else you've been a part of? Although I will say, mm -hmm. special shout out to our friends. We have many to uh, call out here. Well, our, I think our first ever um, interaction together, besides Weaving Spiders Welcome, which you should definitely explain um, as we go, because I, it's it's almost as if you, if you could give the elevator pitch for what Weaving Spiders Welcome is, I'm sure that would be challenging to do in like 60 seconds or less, but we will certainly mm -hmm. um, roll that out. But I do want to give a special thanks to uh, our friend Chris of the King of Cups podcast. We had a fun chat about Eyes Wide Shut and Society, which you can find on the King of Cups RSS as feed. As much fun as you can have talking about such disgusting, oh, yes. disgusting ideas. Very disgusting. And the Secret Societies, which uh, folks today is 323.23. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely be... Going three, all two, in three, for two, the... three, two, three, two, three, two. It sounds like a siren going off. Yeah, War wee, warning. Wee woo. <laughs> wee woo, wee woo. And an additional thanks to our friend Joshua the Branch. He brought us together for a masculinity chat. And we were on there with uh, our friend Benjamin Balderson, Mr. John McGee. We had Gabriel Slick Dissident. We had uh, myself and Alan Marcus. And of course, Mr. Joshua the Branch, you know, we have a lot to to discuss with 323 and Illuminatus because I was recently given the honor and the privilege to do an, a video edit with your voice on it. And uh, so there's a lot I want to cover that we brought up a lot, but let's go back a bit. There was a, something that you shared recently on Telegram that I don't know if many people saw this. I'm not sure uh what the context was so th i think it's a good opportunity to uh ask you really quick uh when you do a video on youtube you have mm -hmm. an idea of your purpose and your audience and the context behind it and you shared one that mm -hmm. was a throwback i believe it was about nine years ago 
introducing the apple pear and oh uh, this is quite uh, a deep cut in the throwbacks i mean it's almost a decade ago so would you like to fill us in my friend uh tell us about your your journey publishing publicly onto youtube and to you know how you got started with the uh public domain that is so funny and fits within the discordian theme of eris and the law of fives and all these ideas that kind of just don't really make sense until they do make sense if you can sense my meaning mm -hmm. here and i don't know that i answered your original question when did i begin to speak my truth i've been trying to explain express my truth all along and it's such a struggle for people to have the patience and the wherewithal to sit still and really look and listen and take in everything without having an inner critic interrupting to say i don't like that or mm, that's kind of weird nah, i'd rather be doing something else and this sort of flitting from one thing to the other, this attention deficit disordered thinking where I'm trying to lay things out that are not linear, okay? They don't go from A to 2 to C to D. Now we're confusing letters and languages and numbers and images and thoughts and feelings and emotions. Spoken like a to... true divergent thinker. Yes, yes, yes. That is the core of what we're dealing with in a conversation. We're conversing. Are you with me? Am I with you? Am I actively listening to me? Are you actively hearing what I'm saying and not thinking, well, you know, I'm getting kind of hungry. I'm getting kind of thirsty. Got to scratch my back a little bit. All these other sort of discomforts and things but to sit with that and really be present in the moment to answer the question of when did I begin to speak my truth publicly on YouTube? Probably in May of 2020 hindsight is 2020 wearing the glasses today to see more clearly. There was a guy out of Germany who started a podcast more like a live stream radio program in the style of uh, these midnight talk shows, paranormal topics, spooky, paranormal, high strangest weirdness, uh, you know, in the desert of Area 51, kind of Americana, spooktacular conspiracy theory sort of stuff. You know who kind of hosts those shows and he was so inspired by these that he wanted to do this now him being in germany means when it's midnight for him it's like afternoon for us in america so we're in the afternoon he's in midnight after the sun has set time zones blow your mind man if it's all happening at the same time but the sun is in a different location right, or right. light whatever so now we've got this topic of well, what's the topic today? We have an open lines call-in show. Mm. So I call in to the show, and it's just my voice, and I'm kind of going on this rant and ramble about how there's this pandemic happening, but really what is pan? What is this god of pan? Mm -hmm. And what is pandemonium? And what is this sort, sort of thought virus that's invading people's minds and altering their reality. And I was suggesting that the virus, which may be a hoax because people are concerned about the legitimacy of the science and whether it should be trusted or not. And if it's proven or unproven, my observation was simply that whether or not there's an actual virus in people's bodies causing symptoms and dis, dis ease in the body leading to death. The very act of announcing such a thing creates a thought in the mind and then people begin to follow and the behavior patterns change literally overnight. Three years ago, was it the 13th? Oh, yeah, the anniversary. Yeah, right. Right. 
Right. So there it is, the 313. And then you might say, well, is that like the Friday the 13th? Is that Triskaidekaphobia? Am I afraid of the number? Mm -hmm. And sort of the planning of these events. That really was the first time that I that I was like, well, I think I know a little bit of something about this and I might have something to say about it. Mm -hmm. It was about a 20 minute phone call and open lines. And Daniel was just kind of like, wow, wow. Wow, let me think about that. <laughs> it really does make you stop and think for sure. I mean, it's uh especially early on too. I mean, it took me a while to really mm -hmm. start to unravel. And I I remember a similar situation, except I wasn't the one pointing it out. It was being pointed out to me. And I was a student teacher and uh my my mentor, you know, at the end of our school day pulled up the Johns Hopkins data. He's right. like, look at this, Jake. I was like, okay, what am I looking at here? He's like, see, you see, like, everyone's afraid, but like, we don't have to be afraid. And it was the first time in a while. I was like, okay, well, I'm glad I'm hearing something alternative for a change because right. uh, talk box, you know, was going nuts and people were right. being reprogrammed into a different, they were relating to their environment and their fellow man differently and Yes, the standing remember. six feet apart. Yes, I thought I thought that was just kind of a prank, bro. I thought that was not really serious. <laughs> I thought that was just an internet thing Didn't think it was where people stick. were saying that we're going to go out and try to obtain some food, but mm -hmm. in doing so, we have to remain six feet apart. And when I went out to get some bread, some food, some groceries, I was hungry. And they're like, well, you know, we need you to stand so far apart. And I'm like, well, you know, we have this sort of toroidal energy field within the body and the right. heart chakra and everything's radiating. And all these people just were not radiating anything at all. And I was just so full of life and wonder and <laughs> awe. And I'm like, why is everyone so dead? They've already received a death sentence. They've taken it inside of themselves and their light is shut off. It's been dimmed. Mm. Why is Absolutely. that? You know, it's funny to consider that at one point in 2020, the grocery store seemed like a nightclub to me because there's a bouncer at the front door and there's only yeah. a certain number of people who are allowed in. I wonder if I had shown up a little bit yes. later with a, mm -hmm. a harem of good of good looking women, I probably would have gotten in much sooner. And like, hey, man, uh, I'm on the uh, proverbial list. Can I go get some bread and milk, please? <laughs> right, right. Can I get some eggs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's you know, exactly what it was. And this is the aspect of the woo and the mysticism mm -hmm. and the uh, when did I discover my wizardhood uh, when i put the cape on and mm. i became a superhero the public persona of creating a character and realizing it's a visual medium which answers the question or leads to the answer to the question of well what is an apple pear and why is a strange guy reviewing it talking about this strange concoction of well is it an apple or is it a pear have it's to like taste the, uh, it. liger of the botanical fruit it's a strange there. confluence of thought, feeling, emotion, sensation, all of these things. And I'm just sniffing. It was an it. ASMR experience as well. Yes. <laughs> Funny you should mention ASMR because that's the thing that was becoming very pop. Mm -hmm. So there's all these channels starting for this auto sensory meridian response thing, this fission, this, uh, the hair back of my neck begin to stand and I just feel the shock and the chills. Right. And it turned out, well, I was eliciting that response in a lot of pe people. I'm like, oh no, this is dangerous. This is, this is playing with fire. <laughs> Yeah. But you somehow find the union. Maybe they're not opposites because the apple and the pear being paired together. I mean, you know, pear even the uh, name itself. Right? And I've got yes. two uh, containers of, of rice over there that I just picked up mm -hmm. today on my way home. I'm a big fan of jasmine rice. And I've yes. also had basmati rice before. And I saw on sale, they've got jasmati. And I'm like, what kind of genetic modification mm. is happening here? Like, 
if we have lemons and limes, what's going to happen if we splice that together? What are we going to We have make? Grimes, the greatest female recording artist <laughs> yes. of all time. Mother of uh, dragons. <laughs> yes, yes. Daenerys Tiger or whatever it was. <laughs> nice, nice. So beginning on the internet from a very early age with a web TV unit in my living room, mm -hmm. having a DVR where I could pause live television. And it was sort of this beginning of a cyberpunk future utopian dream where communication is immediate with instant messaging and access to information very quickly uh, right at the fingertips and you're surfing the web and having unfettered internet access at a very impressionable age meant I had a lot of questions. I had mm. a whole childhood filled with mystery and symbols and strange unexplained events in my life that I was beginning to want to explore far further further and in contemplating this interview earlier and how autobiographical will it get to be and what sort of events led to uh where i am now as a very strange individual <laughs> strange bedfellows right did you hear the story of the haunted house at all the haunted house my haunted house your haunted okay um let's say i'm intrigued and i'm curious mm -hmm. and i'm looking forward to hearing more i did not know so like do you mean to say that you uh previously had established residency in a um a building that was haunted a home a house a place where i resided with my family yes nice yes and the other question weaving spiders welcome well what is that that's a very long last people to follow and follow up on which i'm, I'm sorry doing mr now. alan marcus uh i uh am seeing internet bugginess right now and yes. you know uh and as far as editing goes this will be nice and easy for me because as soon as you said weaving spiders welcome you froze so now we can have our segue into like by the way what is weaving spiders welcome and also we're going to talk about this haunted this haunted house for sure but yes yes it connects because having personally witnessed paranormal activity, unexplained events combined with sort of like a religious fervor and the mysteries of all of these things, angels and demons and different realities of the world, that prevents me from having a mundane life. Mm. Okay. And I remember vividly in second grade, having very visual uh, dreams that would presage very mundane events, including Where's Waldo books. Mm. So my neighbor at this time lived in the house across from me, and he was also in a class across the hall from me in my elementary school, and we'd have a quiet reading time in the afternoon, We'd quietly sit in a corner with a Where's Waldo book that I had not looked at before, and he had not looked at before. But in a night before, in my own dream, in my bed, I would see it, mm. find the Waldo, and know where it is. So when he turned the page, I'd recognize the page. I put my finger right on Waldo and said, "There he is." Yes. And my friend would convince, would be kind of convinced that I had cheated, and I had to try to explain to him, "No, no, no, no. I saw Waldo mm -hmm. on the page in a dream." you know, two or three nights before this happened. Mm. So he's like, you're psychic. I'm like, I thought we all are. This is, mm. this. There, there's a difference here. Not everyone experiences this sort of level of lucidity and dreams and prophetic visions and things. And maybe that's having the belief from Sunday school with Joseph and the many colored dream coat. Mm. So having a symbolic anchor point of reference to say that, yes, God is real. Yes, dreams are important and significant. Yes, everything happens for a reason and it's all interconnected, which then leads to a life of finding the connections, the correspondences to the mysteries and seeing 
what people call significant, meaningful events, which might be a divine feedback, a synchronicity, a correspondence, a pattern recognition, recognition or a shamanic schizophrenia, mental break, sort of mental illness mm -hmm. situation. And it's that fine dance between, oh, is it sane or insane? Is it To what right. degree are we dealing with craziness here? And how does that fit into a punch into the clock, go to work, keep your head to the grindstone, get it done, you know, cash out, go to the bank, go to groceries, shopping, pay the bills, do that again and again and again and these sort of cycles that you're forced to bid into you know i want to ask you on that same exact note of this nine to five grind and then mm -hmm. that being the very exoteric front-facing reality for millions and billions and yet every saturday evening around a certain time for mm -hmm. a certain number of hours uh, i think you've set records recently uh, maybe accidentally. <laughs> the weaving spider's welcome will come together. The weaving spider's webs. The invisible college of the mm -hmm. uh, spiders who weave on Saturdays, sa Saturday nights on YouTube and Rockfin. Wherever we're allowed to stream. So when we have this mundane nine to five grind um, kind of beaten into us in a way. But mm -hmm. every Saturday night, there is a gathering of some kind and the maybe the lost wizardly archetype that seems to not show up much with real mainstream force is gathering in this uh, mm -hmm. more esoteric underground corner of the interwebs here and i would love to hear in whichever sense you can describe it to someone Let's say someone's listening. They're like, wow, this Alan Marcus character is interesting. I want to check out Weaving Spiders. Welcome. What should they expect? I have no expectations. Excellent. To frame something in a way already spoils the experience. Mm. It's like, hey, here's a movie I'm going to recommend. Here's how it begins. Here's the middle of it. Here's how it ends. There's and it's no really interesting tomatoes. because there's a twist here. And you should see this movie. Mm -hmm. Well, I've already framed it in a way that it's a great movie and there's twists and there's turns and it ends this way and it's so cool and it means this to me. And you're like, dude, you just spoil it for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's, it's the art of conversation. A magical conversation with intention to reveal that which is otherwise obscured by or occluded by something that is hazy in front of it. It's not clear. Mm -hmm. And we're taking the time to clarify over and over and over again what we think about certain thoughts and ideas and topics, including a lot of magical correspondences, synchronicities, and the functioning of reality and how it all works together with this sort of pronoic pro conspiracy mm -hmm. that everything works on behalf of the greater good on our behalf, this sort of trusting of the greater reality the all-knowing, the omniscient, the omnipotent, the all-powerful creator force, which is a call against black pill nihilism and these sorts of materialistic uh, ideas of limitation to say that a person is born into a body which is just an organic robot and that consciousness is just created in the brain mm -hmm. a physical hardware situation where neurons are firing and peptides are swimming about and you're thinking that you're in love but really it's just a coca-cola commercial with a sexy woman in it and you're salivating because a bell rang and you're a pavlovian dog mm -hmm. trained to respond in certain ways to certain responses through the behavior modification which is a mouthful 
I like it though. I mean, that leaves plenty of room for mystery. And I feel like that's the essential uh, ingredient, which cannot be named or measured, or it can be named, but it cannot be measured or necessarily um, doled out in any specific way. The uh, mystery that I've been able to participate in, I'm very, uh, I've very, I was very graciously invited to come and speak with the weaving spiders uh, a couple times. I've always had fun listening. I'll be honest. I'm a little intimidated sometimes because sometimes we have a group of people there, a group of bright, bright minds and wonderful souls, lovely hearts. And all I want to do is listen. Or sometimes all I want to do is interrupt people. It goes back and forth. You know, I, I just want to butt in, but in a sense, I just want to say on behalf of uh, anyone who's been a part of the Weaving Spiders, um, not that I can represent them, but I hopefully maybe will speak for them in some way that I'm super grateful for what you've been doing and bringing people together, bringing the ideas together and keeping that mystery alive. It's really it's really special, my friend, and I'm looking forward to each Saturday. Um, something interesting that people will find on the Weaving Spiders channel are the peculiar episode titles <laughs> and um perhaps uh you know if there's any that stick out to you in particular or if you want to share a process of some kind is this uh have you been in the zoom room before a live stream began with so the naming process? this leads to another question there yeah. is so this is called the pre-weave and a weave being a noun and a verb what right. is a weave because mm -hmm. when you're weaving when you are a part uh, of a uh, it's like a wig it's like a hairdo you know, it's like, um, it's a strange guy who wants to be a DJ and he puts all these, uh, crazy colored fabrics in his hair to weave it out. And then he does a DJ thing at an anime convention and it's all like nightcore and dancing <laughs> nice. and it's ridiculous. And there's people dressed in anthropomorphic furry costumes and it's just totally <laughs> bizarre. Oh my. It's very inappropriate. Yeah. But what is appropriate mm. for the occasion? which is to say that there is no clear definition or agreement mm. as to what it is. We don't know what is is. We don't know. And by design and by agreement, those of us who gather together consistently early on every Saturday night reached kind of a consensus and an agreement to say that there is no one singular uh, spokesperson or owner, and in that way, it's decentralized. Mm. So we use the word producer, and in chat, we give everybody the monkey wrench on YouTube, and we include everybody on equal footing. Everyone is equal and valid and validated and their thoughts and expressions and the the time that they have it's a respectful measure we see everyone as being adults here this is not big kid table little kid table adult table at thanksgiving this is a round table everyone has a seat everyone is allowed equal mm -hmm. access to everybody else so that's an important distinction between weaving spiders welcome and other sort of zoom room gatherings where there's a ton of faces on screen and people are sitting there quietly patiently just listening for two hours and then they get five seconds to say hi <laughs> and then they're muted by the host mm, and then thanks for coming gone and ignored right thanks yeah. for showing up and giving me the credibility that you're affirming that i am an important person mm -hmm. as a host of a stream that sort of thing it's a very humbling experience and to be humbled again and again and again to say, well, I'm kind of a fraud. I'm putting on appearance and an air of uh, knowledge and it's a costume and it's the illusion, but really I just have a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of skill and I have a microphone and I have a soundboard and I have a knowledge of things because I've read some books and I've taken notes. It doesn't mean that I am more significant or above average or below average. Yet there is an element of merit. And uh, and receiving compliments is something that is, oh, okay. I just kind of like, well, I'm going to go to do the next thing. 
Yeah, right, right. So I appreciate oh, the compliment. Of course, my friend. Yeah, with, with of love and understanding. Yeah. And I say, well, yeah, but it's it's not a big deal. It's it's nothing. Right. It's just well, we you try, emphasize the if we try to build it up. Yeah, if we try to build it up, then it can become an intimidating thing. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, and then we you know, can sort of repel experience. people who get very nervous with public speaking. And your first question: Well, when did you speak your truth? Uh, I get nervous. I get stage fright. <laughs> yeah. Right. There on, was man. there was an aspect of stage fright uh, for me in college. So, as a freshman in college, nobody knew me there. So I had the opportunity to sort of recreate a persona, mm. kind of a well, who am I going to be in this setting, and understand that as a private Christian college. Okay, so there's already some limitations there, right? Mm -hmm. There's already going to be some expectations. So within that boundary of, I don't want to be the craziest person here, but also I don't want to be the most uptight, buttoned up jacket, clean cut khakis, ironed hems and everything. Sort of like just trying to be authentic, right? Right, right. What is, what is authenticity? And for some people who wear a lot of makeup and costumes and glamour and sort of put on a show and you might feel that's really inauthentic. And they're like, well, no, this is my true self. We deal with this so much where there are cameras everywhere, 24 mm seven. -hmm. And I, I was just reading something earlier, the thought that a hundred years ago, you, you'd have a camera, you would put it in front of a, a child and the child would just be like, I'm shy. And then they go and hide behind mommy and like, can I say something, mommy? Mm -hmm. And now children are growing up with cameras everywhere. And then when it's announced that, hey, I'm recording you, the child just starts singing and dancing like it's an audition for American Idol <laughs> or America's Got Talent or something. So all these kids are trained to dance like monkeys. Mm -hmm. That's got to be doing something with the mind. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, in a sense, I mean, there is an autobiographical note that I perhaps in a discordian way um mm -hmm. i glanced at this at some point i don't know when this was sent but a lot of what i'm referring to comes from the telegram chats which will definitely right. be linked down below but for the context of this development um from the world of uh perhaps the uh you know the americanized christian world and right. also this um merging into a uh, a wizardly state of existence of mm -hmm. mind of of uh observance of nature and the patterns of nature i do remember you sharing a photo this is going to be oddly specific but you know who knows what will happen that's the uh, fun of this mysteries i think it was a vending machine at a bible camp at some point and it's interesting to think about this because was it a utopia it was a fruitopia, yes. So okay. fruitopia, and you know, I was going to ask you about the wizardly archetype in right. general, um, not yeah. to uh, go in any particular direct direction, but just to kind of think about the wizard in our modern culture or the lack thereof of the, mm -hmm. the wizard and the, the uh, lack Merlin of wisdom. Figure. Yes, maybe the, the lack uh, of as well. magical realism. Yes, and that archetype. So with an arc, mm -hmm. a story arc, a character arc. We are also developing the archetype uh, within ourselves. And I'm curious, yes. just from the Fruitopia, um, you know, that little nugget of memory, that nostalgic mm -hmm. uh, just burst, <laughs> what comes up? Right, right. Uh, perfect question. I'm glad you asked that. And you're going to be punished for asking it because I'm just going to lay it on you. Well, I'm certainly comfortable. So go ahead, my friend. Every summer... Every summer that I that I was alive up until like age eighteen, and then every other summer, whenever once you're an adult, you don't always want to go to family camp and Bible camp with the family. You know, you got some other ideas and plans. Mm -hmm. There's a location in Minnesota. I'm from Minnesota, in Alexandria, Minnesota, on the lakes, Lake Geneva Bible Camp, Lake Geneva Christian Center. Very mm -hmm. specific. Now I'm revealing all the uh -oh. truths here. Okay. Every summer, my family would attend for 10 days. Now, this is a very specific place. It's the Assemblies of God Christian Camp Ground. 
and they have the big auditorium. So every day is basically attending church services and worship services and sort of religious education within this very specific framework. Now, this is a Pentecostal church setting. So again, people are going to associate that with glossolalia, which is going to answer your question about Fruitopia because of the Cocteau Twins and Elizabeth Fraser singing like a dolphin Ooh. shimmering in the waters with her glossolalia and sort of possessed angelic voice. So her voice became becomes an instrument that kind of shimmers and shines. Mm. And all of the album art and the music is very much nostalgic triggering for me. It has this sort of childlike wonder and awe and beauty to it that I just cannot explain. She was asked by the Coca-Cola company to create the vocals for a Fruitopia commercial. Mm -hmm. So I remember when I went to, uh, okay, so there was family camp for the family. My family would go, but then there were other weeks for other age groups. Mm -hmm. So I would attend family camp, but then before or after family camp, because family camp was around the 4th of July, there would be other weeks, like five days, Monday to Friday, for different age groups. So you'd start out, the earliest you go with like third grade or fourth grade. So for a third or fourth grader to leave the home and sleep in a different bed for four nights and survive is kind <laughs> of terrifying. And I was the only kid from my church who went. So I went with my pastor, mm -hmm. rode up with him and then was put into a bunk a cabin with some other pastors kids that i had no idea who they were mm. and they they were kind of mean to me they they were kind of not allowing me to enter into their clique a little bit mm. can you imagine that okay so there's that sort of aspect of well it's a big family and christ's love and hugs and you know handshake but is there a seat for you at the table yeah Right. So that gets into the 86 number and what's to be 86 and how does 86 equal 23 and what is the separation from the whole and how do you integrate yourself and all of these concepts. I need to stay on focus and answer the question of Fruitopia commercial to the vending machine to nostalgia to Cocktail Twins to the Scream movie with the Scream mask. Mm. Okay. Which I've got right here in puppet shows. Nice, we're getting a, a mask here. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay, Very so you timely. got puppets and masks and pirates and all the all this stuff. And I got into a lot of puppetry doing um, puppets in like Sunday school and like uh, like children's church type things. You know, so you do puppet shows. I, mm. I don't know if you're familiarity with like American church culture and children's church and puppet shows and music and worship songs and and a father, Abraham, had many sons and veggie tales and all this sort of culture within a culture within a culture. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. The uh, Christian subcultures are fascinating. I've become very familiar with the Latter-day Saints and okay. um, I haven't really talked about this publicly, but I was part of their ranks for some time. And uh, Okay. So like probably get into growing that up other as, a, as a child, your family. Okay. Okay. We all have sort of this cultural petri dish in which we are born into mm. as children and then we develop and then we begin to uh, grow into our adult minds and adult bodies and our thoughts change and shift and alter and change but some people remain consistent some people their only consistency is their inconsistency mm. so they're always flitting and flirting with different ideas and repulsion and attraction and affinity and these sorts of things wandering around and I'm just kind of like trying to remain centered and balanced through all of these crazy extremes, which means it's very difficult because I've never joined one camp or the other. I've never chosen a favorite color, whether it's red or blue or yes or no or love or hate or whatever the, the camp is divided at. I could see both perspectives, which will connect us to Robert Anton Wilson and Illuminatus and reality tunnels and being able to view things from all the possible angles to paint a more clear picture in a way. So returning to Bible camp, 
with a group of, I don't know, fourth, fourth or fifth graders, mm. summer camp, and we have kind of a curfew, lights out, go to bed. One of the kids from my school had joined us for this particular summer. Maybe it was the third or fourth time I'd been there in kind of a kid's camp situation. And then this was probably 1996, probably 97, 98, when the movie was released. And everybody was uh, able to buy those screen masks. This is significant because the artist of the screen, right, right, the Norwegian yeah. artist, shares a birthday with me, which I found oh. out later on. So th these are why these symbols, ideas, and thoughts just correspond and relate and make some sort of sense in the mind because mm. there's sort of this anchoring correspondence to well we share a birthday oh, okay or this was released at this period of time which connects it to this other visual idea and i'm a very visual thinker Love very it. visual yeah learning to become more etymologically exercised to express linearly with words to complete a sentence to build a paragraph to complete the thought to close it up and then say, okay, what's your next question? <laughs> but I'm more inclined to yeah. say, okay, you've asked five questions. Yes. Now I'm adding a question upon a question upon right. a question to, to paint with a, a broader painting, a broad strokes. This is and what then, I would call exponential gnosis. Yes, but then I have to go back and say, okay, there's this part of the painting where I need to put in some fine lines to exactly. really define exactly. the details Filling. of the conversation. Filling. Yeah. So good Christian kids behaving badly at Bible camp, this kid, Travis, wears the screen mask, puts it on, dresses all in black, and then runs around the campground, hiding behind cabin windows, putting his face in the window, banging oh. <laughs> on people's cabins, going, ah, and screaming, and then hiding, and just scaring everybody. And we're like, it's out. funny that Travis so like seemed to have like he had this all planned out. He got the uh, mask yes. specifically to bring it to camp. You know, like no one saw. He was able to like see his it. idea of camp was probably the Friday the Thirteenth movies <laughs> and slashers and killers. And I'm like, I hadn't seen those movies. I I wasn't watching horror movies as a kid. Those are evil and satanic, and we can't see those things. They're terrible. And now I'm like, oh, they're beautiful because I love movies because I'd studied filmmaking, love the practical effects. And the demonic realm is very interesting. Oh, yeah. Because that's the horror aspect that we need to integrate into the whole. The collective shadow. So, Fruitopia so, connects to Cock mm. Dog Twins, connects to Summer Art Camp, connects to Scream Movies, connects to the Forbidden, connects to the behavior that is seen as perhaps sinful. Mm. So, you don't want to do these things because it's displeasing it's dishonoring to god and to the church and you're going to make a fool of yourself but within those boundaries you know you try to put something in boundaries and we are going to test them really is this an actual boundary and what will be the repercussion if oh, we test the boundary so yeah. you tell the child you know go to bed mm -hmm. but we're drinking fruitopia or mountain dew or caffeine products mm -hmm. And we're told we can't leave the cabin. So now you have a bunch of boys with empty Mountain Dew bottles filling them up with their own urine because they can't go to the toilets. Yikes. And this other kid is like, dude, I got to go to the bathroom. I'm going to put a screen mask on. I'm going to hide my identity. I'm going to run across the campground, go to the forest <laughs> bathroom, and then make my way and hide back. And we're like, dude, you're in our cabin and we're all going to get in trouble because we let you out. <laughs> and he's like, I don't care. I'm like, well, okay. Some of us got to sleep though. Mm. So we have to be up at 8 a.m. for breakfast and it's 5 a.m. and the sun is rising and we're like, we haven't slept yet. Mm. Incredible, incredible. You know, I want to ask in a way, this story really highlights the fact that, you know, when you're testing those boundaries, <clears throat> you will come up against uh, what some may call resistance, but then on the other side of resistance is true learning. It's like you have to test those boundaries. You have to put your hand on that hot stove to really learn that it is hot, to really grasp that concept of heat. And, you know, mm -hmm. I briefly mentioned this. I I think I should just throw it in there because I teased it a little bit, but just to, um, as a companion 
side note to what you just said about Travis and this the scream mask and testing those boundaries of the the ideological structure. Um, as an experiment, you know, I grew up without any sort of religious structure, so we had very opposing childhoods. And it was in my late later twenties when I met these uh, wonderful Latter Day Saints missionaries. Uh, the Mormons have been very kind, and I. Mm -hmm. uh, tested the boundaries as an experiment i was like i'm going to become worthy of baptism and then i'm going to reveal <laughs> that i still drink coffee how will i be judged well how did you know that i don't ever drink coffee except on oh, very special days a special day it's a hot indeed, beverages man friend. the hot beverages are good for you i don't care what anyone we, says we break rules on the yes. 23rd day of the month but only on the 23rd every other day we are not sinning but on the 23rd we can break apart from patterns yes and have a little bit of caffeine a little so bit of coffee. when we think about eris and the fact yes. that there's chaos i mean you you think about the you know we can imagine these young um campers caffeinated and of course chaos it's like the perfect ingredient yes. for chaos in this um and it's what i've found with you know caffeine and other um slightly altering modes of consciousness where if you're going to invite mystery into your yes. life into your existence you got to show mystery the doorway otherwise right. it could be difficult for that mystery to find you or for you to find it and vice versa so the, the mystery always knew where i lived <laughs> the, i was living in the mystery and then i'd leave and it's that's a very I follow you there you know so that that's a perfect reminder i think i mm -hmm. almost forgot to ask you the haunted house we're going to talk about the this haunted house, house. This and house this house um so you know our, we're still in minnesota but we're yep. uh, talking about your childhood home yep and yep. as of as a framing reference to tell this this story alan um were you able to share the story like with your family like did were they experiencing this haunting or this uh ghostly presence with okay so you 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 weren't alone there okay well that's a, a relief mm -hmm. um very or curious is it more frightening or is it more frightening <laughs> indeed indeed right because it's not just in my imagination yes that's what makes the the egregore real <laughs> uh is that his name Egregor? is that his name gregor Edgar Casey? Edgar samsa <laughs> this is a kafka-esque tale yes when i woke up one morning and i was a terrible insect Oh yeah, Kafka, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I know you like literary references. As I appreciate do I. that. Yes, yes, yeah, man. Well, in a sense, I mean, as far as you want to get into it, mm -hmm. and with as as much depth as you feel uh, would do it justice. I mean, it's not often that I encounter. I get to speak with someone. I get to mm -hmm. relate to someone because I've I've had a couple paranormal experiences. Maybe not so much um, right. localized in one area, but you know, I'm definitely curious. I don't know if you've shared these stories. Um, breadcrumbs. I've, bread I've, I've, I've given hints of it, waiting for people to say, "Hey, um, timestamp this moment here. Uh, here we go. You mentioned these ideas, and then you said nothing else about them." Well, mm. of course, because in a, in a casual conversation, you just don't say like. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was a pretty normal occurrence in my home with poltergeist activity happening every Wednesday evening, which every is Wednesday. very significant because RX only picture show, the prescription only picture show, a Wednesday event. So what is the significance of communication and otherworldly entities and occult ideas happening on a Wednesday? Mm. It was RX only picture show with James Maiden and S.B. Elger that laid the foundation for what would later become Weaving Spiders Welcome with author Tracy Twyman, who shares a death date with my mother, which is spooky in some ways, or just a factoid, right? It's a matter of being too close to it, and then you kind of prescribe the meaning in what it could be. So in telling the story of a family in a house 
dealing with ideas of spiritual warfare and eternal souls and raptures. And I was drawing charts of timelines for uh, the end of the world scenario, the, the rapture of the Christian church, the saints going to heaven. Is this a tribulation? post-trib, mid-trib, when is Jesus going to return? When will all of these things lay out? And I was kind of doing this uh, detective work and drawing these graphs in the fourth grade. When, what do you do? Listen to Green Day? I don't know, man. Get real here. We are approaching 1999, year 2000, and we know that by 2001, we're going to have a new space odyssey to sing about. It's going to be strange. I was already seeing the signs and the symbols leading to this. And this is sort of the culture I'm in when I'm in my home on a Wednesday night preparing to leave to go to church. Now, there was a bit of an antagonistic relationship across our driveway with our neighbors. Mm -hmm. So they were kind of uh, suggesting that our house was haunted. And they were convinced of it. Mm -hmm. And I might tell them these spooky stories that would spook them. But then they kind of mirrored back with the feedback. So there's all these probable explanations, but let me just explain what I encountered. Right. Five members of a family, church is at 7 p.m. It's 6.45. Get in the van. We're going to church. Okay. So that's the goal. Go to church. Get there on time. Get in the van. But of course primping and prune, pruning and putting the gel in the hair and getting everything mm -hmm. just right because there's going to be people at church and you want to look good, smell good, feel good, shower, put on clean clothes, this sort of thing. Which always means that someone's going to be a little bit slow. Maybe it was me. Maybe I was the last one in the van. So I'd get in the van, but then I'd be like, wait a second, I forgot. I had I had a, like a CD or something that I'd borrow from someone. Oh, my Bible, maybe. I needed to bring my Bible. I didn't have my Bible on me. Let me let me run back up to my bedroom, grab my Bible, go back to the van. So I had been in the van, and then I went back to my room. So it was literally within less than two minutes. Mm. So in my room, everything was as it was. I went downstairs, went out to the door, was in the van, forgot my Bible, run back upstairs, go into my room to find my Bible. But during this time frame, a very small time frame, everything upstairs was undone. So we're talking the mattresses on all the beds falling across the room, the uh, springboards of the beds, the baseboard flipped over. Wow. Everything on the dresser, like we had like um, dressers and on top were shelves with like mm. stuffed animals flung across the room. Scattered. Not just like tipped over, but scattered. Mm. A complete undoing of everything. Okay. So now you begin to feel the chills. Yeah. So I'm like, uh, I was just up here. I was literally just up here. And there's no way that three different bedrooms could be instantly within such as and i would have you'd think i would have heard it like if i had just left the room and there was someone hiding in a closet with a screen mask on to create a horror movie scenario it's <laughs> like this is where i began to do the metaphysical detective work to figure mm. out what is going on but then written on the mirrors in like lipstick and red phrases and things so there's not just like earthquake where things fell off but there's also writing on mirrors and lipstick and makeup products. And now I've got my Bible. I'm in the van. I'm like, I'm not going to tell them that when we get home, we're going to have to spend an hour cleaning the house up. And it well, wasn't me that did it. Explain, yeah. Right, right, right. So it's like, well, and I, it just happens. So you're still processing it too. <laughs> this happened multiple times. Wednesday night. So it got to be a reoccurring pattern mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, another Wednesday, another strange events. And then we're going to come home and we're going to put on a nice Christian animated film from our VHS tape. Wait, wait, wait. So all of the um, objects and such would be undone, scattered, total chaos. 
yes writing on the mirror and then would it all just go back together no kinda like no, automatically no no, no. no. no so it was no. a total disaster we total would mess. we would need to pick up the pieces wow okay over and over again consistently oh my Wednesday god nights. <laughs> yeah okay 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 and then we'd have like movies on vhs and we'd hit we put them into play but then these were like commercial movies that we purchased with like uh, Christian cartoon, Hanna Barber, Barbera, or a Nest video, or you know these sort of things that you purchase at a Bible bookstore, Christian program. So we put on calming things mm. to try and say, okay, well, if this is the way it's going to be, but then we hit play, the movie would start, and then it had been recorded over, like magnetically changed on the tape. So we're like. Because it was in our rack. So the the tape that we chose that was in our rack that we took out of the shelf, put in, had been scrambled. Mm. The one that we chose first that night. So it's these sorts of mind games that are being played mm. that is very much like, well, what are the odds of that? Just so you and, were expecting to put in this VHS and watch um, a nice christian right. film to bring the holy spirit back into this home and, to and, sort of balance things but there oh. was an antagonistic force and it's like well how do you explain that so as a child <laughs> witnessing this I'm like well let's call up our pastor and have mm. to explain this to him uh that same pastor i met like two, two summers ago at the same bible camp and i had a kind of a conversation with him as an adult so now i'm an adult he's an adult we're having this conversation i'm kind of like hey you remember um remember those uh after wednesday night church services we'd call you up and he's like yeah well, what do you remember about it he's like well you know the service would end people would go home and it'd be like 8 30 or 9 p.m in the evening i get a ring on the telephone and i get chills on my spine and my wife would be like don't answer the phone don't answer mm -hmm. the phone and he would answer the phone and we'd say, hi, pastor, could you come over and, you know, pray with us and maybe, um, I don't know, you know have, perform an exorcism. <laughs> yeah, potential exorcism. Right. It's and he'd be like, mm -hmm. and, his wife, and his wife is like, on the, don't go. Say no. That's fascinating that even before he picked up, she was like, he don't was answer. Terrified. Well, because it was a pattern. Yes, yes. Right. This is what I'm trying to put forth here. It's not a one-time deal. It was etched in the mind see, of an impressionable person. And the detective in me would say, well, you know, it could have been, could have been my mother. It could have been my father, my brother, my it could have been anyone. But then... Was it just a neighbor kid who had a key to our house and would know that it's Wednesday nights, we're going to be gone, and he could sit for an hour and watch cable television mm. in our living room? Mm. But it didn't happen when we were at church. It happened within that small frame. I mean, some evenings it would be like things were fine. We'd come home. Then it would be different. But there was that one instance that just sort of said, no, this is how this is how mm. it is. And I this is what I saw. All right. But again, I didn't tell my family before, to go and look and see for yourself and prove it. I wasn't taking pictures or documenting. I wasn't mm. writing it in a journal. I didn't want to write down these haunting, strange, terrifying events. I didn't want to remember them, but I'm not going to forget them, mm. which answers your question, you know, of the mysteries. And when did I get initiated into it? It was, they were always there. Always. I didn't know that it was different i didn't i didn't really didn't really know at that age that this was unusual i mean i knew there was a level of unusualness but i figured that because there's the movie poltergeist that it was a cultural phenomenon and it was kind of it just happened sometimes mm. Happen sometimes and maybe it's you know a sister who's going through body changes and ready to you know become a woman and these sorts of changes and in the you know that sort of thing when a, you know, a girl transitions to becoming a woman that's sort of uh, very important which might have something to do with it but again i'm at the point where i don't need to explain it i've experienced it 
Mm. And that's the ineffable thing where you're stumbling over words and it, it's the visual impression yes. of things in disarray that leads to the chaos. And in a religious sense where we have a God form that is order and direction and curation and gardening things and keeping them beautiful and clear but then there's also the other force which is in opposition to that which was very real made real to me at that time yes in a sense your worldview at one point and you know i mm -hmm. can definitely relate was a perfectly fit together puzzle uh mm -hmm. you know like a nice safe walled garden and then you know eventually the uh the serpentine element of chaos will slither in and disrupt that um stability that uh that order the order man and that's where we can slither in the concept of what is a wizard, right. Harry, Hagrid, right. what's going on here? I was going to ask you too, would the Harry Potter movies uh, were considered satanic in, in the uh, the cultural reference at, at that point? Or, uh, they, no, they were, were, not, not they were released, released through scholastic book sales at a time when I was familiar with the covers. Other people were reading them. Other people were reading Goosebumps and Scary Stories. Oh, Goosebumps. And I yeah. wasn't really interested in reading fake stories because mm -hmm. I was experiencing real life aspects. Yeah, of right. You're like, who needs that? Yeah. <laughs> right. So it's like those stories pale in comparison to anything that is reality experienced mm. for real. Well, before I ask you this next question, um, again, Mm -hmm. With this uh, haunting story, this repetitive, this right. cyclical experience, you know, once you've experienced it, you're now, uh, you know, if, if I had placed myself in your shoes, I would have been seeking out any kind of pattern recognition available to me and trying to put mm -hmm. together the scattered puzzle pieces to form some sense of concrete unity once again. And mm -hmm. I, what I wanted to say is just, I want to thank you for sharing the details. I mean, I can't gauge too well because you have such a great sense of humor and uh, wit that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm grateful that a potentially uh, deeply traumatic event of this nature, um, which mm -hmm. has shaped That's your identity, where the humor comes from. That's where the humor like, comes uh, from. Exactly, exactly. We yes. have to laugh about yes. it because we'd be terrified of existing if yes we knew the depths of the lived experience of certain people mm. and you're like well how do you become a mystic i didn't choose this right. life i didn't mystic say did like oh right. i like the ripley's believe it or not books in the library and i liked the people with the long fingernails and the extreme records of weight loss and you know how many times you can jump rope and all these things and believe it or not well i didn't have to or not. choose yeah. to not believe it it was there. It wasn't a. It wasn't a belief. It was an experience. An experience. Life. Vast difference there. And I want to ask you about the priming of that as well, because yes. when it comes to belief, I know we uh, we we touched on a couple of things like from SpongeBob, Peter Pan, mm -hmm. Pinocchio, even uh, you know more of an a higher age bracket with uh, Robert Anton Wilson, the Illuminatus right. trilogy, things of this nature. Let's start with SpongeBob. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you about priming and how yes. perhaps even if you did not grow up watching any horror movies or perhaps if someone did grow up watching a lot of horror, reading goosebumps and things of this nature, seeing and absorbing and integrating these symbols, whether they're conscious or subconscious, mm -hmm. how we can find these threads of symbolism and occulted knowledge throughout vast areas of pop culture, whether it's in the programming of uh, children and television shows, or even in, you know, the more front facing horror movies like scream. And, you know, we have this new film coming out or it's already been released. I haven't seen it um, mm -hmm. in a very broad sense though. I'm, I'm asking you, you know, if you were to take the temperature of the, of the culture mm -hmm. from, from your experience, from what you've studied, from what you've spoken about on various podcasts, where are we headed in terms of this new spring season? And if you could think about the symbols that you've seen recently, like one thing I've really enjoyed about Weaving Spiders Welcome is 
going into the fashion <laughs> and the uh, fashion shows and the very animalistic nature of uh, right, fashion. Right, right. I, I just, I watched a lot of America's Next Top Model and just smile with my eyes, smile as a Tyra Banks thing because mm. I was so interested in broadcasting, mm. television, and film and formats of shows you know this is a reality show what is the format of the reality show you have women with the dream of becoming america's next top model that's an interesting format there's constraints there's expectations there's a format to that that's interesting there was also survivor yes let's take people out of their american life throw them on an island and then let them play some games and let them stab each other in the back. And it's sort of this American unfettered capitalism, socialism, tribalism. What is it? Mm -hmm. It's a grand experiment. It's a social experiment. Well, it's a contrived format with hidden cameras everywhere and people mm -hmm. asked to recite their line again from this angle. So it's this, it's not real, but they call it reality. And then that, influences the priming of perception to answer your question in a more focused manner about how things prime the mind it's the juxtaposition of here's where the camera's pointed mm. this is the frame this is the framing of the device of the story and the conflict and it's already sort of prepackaged within an archetype of Oh, that person's the mole. They can't be trusted. That person's going to be the cool best friend. That person, that's the winner. There's the winner there. That person, the loser. Okay, so you've got these roles that people are playing, and the casting directors are already fitting them for their costume, for their wardrobe, for their role to play. It's all visual, is it? But is the visual aspect a glamour magic that's hypnotizing people to not see what's going on on the surface? Which is why when we talk about a SpongeBob movie, we as adults can see symbols that we are familiar with. And then we ask the question, well, how appropriate is this for children? Mm. And at what age? Without media literacy, a three-year-old, a four-year-old, a five-year-old, a six-year-old, they take in everything. They absorb it like a sponge. Their minds absorb everything without filter of, is this appropriate behavior are these appropriate words is this person acting like a jerk and is this a role model should i use these words to provoke a response in my own life mm -hmm. when i want to throw a tantrum to receive attention these sorts of questions and if it's The Simpsons and you have a character like Bart who's telling people to eat my shorts and the Butterfinger BB thing, like, you know, Butterfingers, right? Is that a filthy word to say? It could be depending on the intention behind the exactly. words to call somebody a Butterfingers or like eat my shorts. Mm. Uh, you remember Darkwing Duck? Suck gas evil do doer no. like why are you are little you are you telling me to suck your ass man <laughs> yeah, like you, you can't even say the word suck come again to imply that you're <laughs> no that's filthy language don't say the word <laughs> don't say that because it sounds like that's what i'm trying patiently to explain to people if the word sounds like come 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 it's an invitation but it's also priming and in a physiological sense, a woman is primed by language and ASMR voices by the man to say, come, my lady, come, come, my lady, be my butterfly, sugar, baby, you know, mm. crazy town, right? It's all this sort of MTV culture that becomes culture. So we ask, why are these things relevant? 
to our own lives because they've shaped our flavor palette at very impressionable times in our life. We have favorite songs into our adulthood that we probably heard for the first time when we were between 13 and 17 years of age at a very emotionally impactful time in our lives. And I've said before, I remember exactly where I was on September 11th, 2001. I was at school waiting to go home to turn on MTV, to watch TRL, Mm -hmm. to vote for payable on death's video alive. I feel so alive for the very first time. I feel alive and they're making out and the train's going by and there's surfers and waves and it's so cool. And there's, and here's a Christian band on MTV and I have to pledge my support Mm all things Christian in the culture wars. I was born into a culture war as a soldier in the army of the Lord, not to be a knight in Satan's service listening to Kiss and Gene Summons here with Gene his Summons, devil yes, yes. split fork tongue. <laughs> right? And even that name, Simmons, Siemens, you know, you, you begin and Simony. To, Collecting money to pay for the sins. Simony, yeah. We play the word game, the name game a lot. Mm. And whether or not there's a there there or an idea there or something there, by playing the game and being playful with it, maybe we begin to uncover patterns in our own mind Mm. and word associations and You might say, well, is this like a Jungian analysis? Is this a Freudian thing? Those very concepts of a Jungian analysis prime the mind and frame an idea in a very specific limited set of beliefs, terminology, and definitions. It's funny to wrap up a personality into a complex but in a sense, it's more complex than that, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is very much interesting to consider that people might look at me and try to study my astrology chart or my personality profile or all of these things. And I just kind of laugh and shrug and say, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, this seems to reflect back at me some aspects, but it's a very incomplete picture. Mm -hmm. And going back to a prescription or a cure or a cause, causation, that's the question of synchronicity and the chain of custody of the event. Who had the ball? Who passed the ball? Who's dribbling the ball now? If it's a sports metaphor, if this is a billiard table, and you have physics in your mind, an idea of how things generally work. It's like having a server on a computer and they say we have 99.9% uptime. Hmm. But you go to my website and it's down. And then it's up again. And you're like, well, what happened there? That's kind of spooky. I was trying to get this information and I was trying to have a conversation, a Zoom meeting, and mm. there was little gremlins in the machine or there's the archons in the, the technology the the machine. Yeah. <laughs> the thing wasn't working when it needed it worked all along. Mm. But I'm trying to say something very specific and it, it, it the message didn't get through and it was you know th- a lag. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> Yes. So for the listeners experiencing the leg, we'll give them a breath mm. and a moment to center themselves and to return into active listening in the conversation. Because we're pulling at so many threads and soon the sweater is just going to dis- just ravel. It's gonna. It can't even speak anymore. <laughs> you know. You you begin to summon the uh, the heiress, the goddess, the the chaos, the um. The tongue twisters, the, the oh, tongue yes. orc oh, serpentine yes. language of the reptilians and the conspiracy. <laughs> well, we uh, did start on some form of glossolalia in a sense. So it'd be yes. <laughs> interesting to return. But um, 
you know, in a sense, what the question are you saying? Innocence, question. innocence, like yes, childlike, I'm innocently, wonder? uh, trying to make an observation. And mm -hmm. in, in a sense, when we think about the question within the, the question, if people can remember yeah. what was said, I do remember asking about springtime and yes. with primavera with this time before summer this uh mm -hmm. this budding of new energy and new light mm -hmm. or it's the same old light but it's <laughs> we've adjusted our, our dial a, a new, bit to it's a new it. year it's, it's, it's a new year happy new year saving time happy ramadan right uh what i want to ask is in a conceptual manner you know with our our symbolic understanding i'm curious what you think whether it's a germ theory or a terrain theory thing or whether it's uh, an astrological or a psychedelic or however you want to approach it. But I, I want to ask you about mm -hmm. the concept in a free association manner of mm -hmm. allergies, because I don't know if you've noticed, uh, I don't know if I sound a little funny. My, uh, my nasal passageways have been a bit clogged up and I'm, right, uh, right. I'm fighting through this like a brave soldier of Christ to, in a sense, exhale and right right and you mentioned that and i myself. realized my nose is just dripping yeah <laughs> so in a sense i want to say that i love spring i'm um, I, I was born in the spring yeah. okay but something that most people don't remember about spring because they're caught up in that winter mindset they're like oh, mm -hmm. i can't wait for spring is that when the trees are budding when the plants are returning they are also releasing their form of, uh, you know, their call it toxins, call it whatever you wish, mm -hmm. but it has an effect on us. This new energy brings right. in new challenges. The pollination of new energy offers the literal pollination. The literal pollination, literally pollinating energy. plant. It offers its its own barriers and boundaries and resistance. And right now, the boundary of okay. my um, airways is obstructed in some way. Sure. I'm, I'm curious, on sure. a symbolic sense, for the new year. Um, sure, sure. So you asked about my the gap in my resume? Yes, this this gap in your resume. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we must explain it. Uh, we must get to the bottom of it. But, you know, my question in an right. orderly sense is really um, – what do you think about the springtime? Now that we're here on this yes. 3 23 23 date, we've been approaching, we've been approaching. Perhaps the, the question is a mixture it's of the weave of the in, twos and the heading. threes. Two, three, yes. two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three. And when we tell you that everything is 23, you will see the 23 Better. everywhere. You will be inculcated into the enigma of 23 and what that means in all manners of speaking and levels of correspondences and associations. The gap in my resume can be explained by the fact that I did work at greenhouses and tree nurseries and have that work experience with pruning trees and nurturing them and plants and Gerbera daisies and selling and sales and greenhouse work and all of this stuff. And because it's a seasonal thing, hours spent outdoors seeing frost, thaw, and snow melt in Minnesota. Minnesota, man, <laughs> you know it. It's a real oh, thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a real thing to experience cabin fever mm. this time of the year, March 3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2, the 23rd, and then getting into April and wanting those April showers to melt all the snow so mm. then everything is green again. And I walked to school uphill through the snow both ways <laughs> for miles and miles. Fortunately, I had boots on most of the time. Sometimes it was barefoot because my socks would get wet, you know, this mm. sort of thing. L true experience. Mm. Walking to and from school to experience the cold and being out in the cold and then having the comfort of home and bedrooms and books and dry socks and warm tea and snacks and things. To experience the seasonal change, that is a bit of a mystery and a miracle in itself. We know with entropy being that 
You have warm pizza, you leave it out, it becomes room temperature. Right. You put it in the fridge, it's cold. You put it back on the counter, it goes to room temperature, but it never warms itself back up. Mm. So the mystery of this great release of energy to move us from frozen state to birthing of a new year is a bit of a mystery. And in saying that, there are mystery traditions and religions and things that really focus upon this time of year with seasonal festivals and dancing around maypoles and fertility rituals and things. It's exciting to be a part of this cycle and mm -hmm. to observe it and notice it, but also to, to remember that we are integrated and a part of it as many people might feel disconnected and disassociated from this natural cycle, but it's a, a really lovely reminder. However, I am reminded it could be uh, just from looking out my window mm -hmm. or, you know, having these insightful conversations the reminder is what I've been searching for. It's this remembering of something, this uh, tapping into this ancient wisdom uh, that's been passed on through many generations. And here we are once again, offering the friendly reminder uh, that perhaps we do come from divine realms. And as Terence McKenna says, you will return to those di those divine realms. Um, it's not exactly how he said it. It was more of a nasally voice when he was speaking. You are a divine being, and you'll return to those same divine realms. Yes. <laughs> I was just listening to Dennis, Dennis, his brother, McKenna. Dennis McKenna, yes, sir. Yep. And those ideas, and I don't want to focus on, you know, was that an agent? Was that a real person? Oh, was yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take know, it for what it is. Yeah. Mushrooms Man, Gordon Watson, <laughs> Jacob Mushroom the Cross. And he certainly you know, wasn't like Barry Garcia, I can tell you that. <laughs> you know, and I, I, you know, I try to mention Robert Anton Wilson, and I, and I just assume, I just assume that everybody would be like, oh, I love that guy. Mm. But people have been like, I don't care. To really do him justice, Alan, for mm -hmm. for for raw to to right. like really get raw with Robert, Robert Anton Wilson, Bob. Robert. Friends call him Bob. <laughs> Praise Bob. Bob. Bob is one of my grandfather figures. Uh, mm. uh, Bob and uh, Joseph Campbell, mm. very much grandfatherly, and people are even suggesting that you know uh, Joseph Campbell at Sarah Lawrence College uh, just doesn't make sense. What's that guy doing at an all-women's college? Where does he get all this funding? And why is he putting out all this mythological document stuff? And why is he on PBS? And all these questions that r are rightfully being asked. And I'm just like, well, you know, I mean, I read the book at a, at a time and I enjoyed it. And I I don't need to create an idol or put mm, yeah. a person on a pedestal and then sort of uh, associate my self-worth with the validity and legitimacy of the organicness and truth telling yeah. of another individual who gave me tidbits of information along my path, which led me to the next bit of information. May I offer you a parallel, good sir? Because when it comes to controversy, um, I like to dive in whenever possible. And uh, mm -hmm. in 2018, when I began the, the teacher training program, um, public school teacher i've been teaching 10th grade this is my fifth year mm -hmm. jordan peterson was the man who helped yeah. me get through this because i was literally working seven days a week sometimes till 2 a.m five of those days i was unpaid because i was a student teaching you know of course you, you don't get paid for that and then mm -hmm. friday saturday sunday work sometimes mm -hmm. till 2 a.m i was uh at a banquet hall for weddings that's some pretty good tips, man. People tip very well when they're wasted at a wedding. <laughs> party Anyways, down? Yes, yes. Are you in the movie, that show Party Down? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Doing the catering? Yeah. Certain... You just got to bring the right people the right drink mm -hmm. and, you're, and you're good to go. So anyways, right. the concept of clean your room was what I got out. And I've read the books and I listened to the lectures. I wasn't following him on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I wasn't um Every Wednesday, I was wrong. forced to clean my room. Yeah, yes essentially yes essentially you know the symbols made manifest the symbols from an astral made plane to a legitimate 
real punch you in the face. Hey, notice mm, this yes, yes, situation yeah. of Jordan Peterson. Peter sent Peterson saying, I was, I said, Peter saying, Peter saying, you know, Peter, <laughs> what would Peter say from the Bible and what were his <laughs> ideas? Jordan Peterson gets into biblical speak. He gets into the archetypes and he becomes sort of this prophet. And is he a wizard? Is he a wise man? Is he a prophet? Mm. Is he a soothsayer? Is he a snake oil salesman? He's just a guy. Yeah. He's just you know, a it's, guy. it's interesting. I was told to clean my room and to be my best self in some cliche way. Right, right. And then all of a sudden, if, uh, you know, if you associate your, uh, your successes or your um, mm -hmm. confidence and inspiration to this individual, uh, you could be lumped in certain groups or even questioning the individual like, oh, is he a World Economic Forum agent? What's going on? The United Nations is working with, you know, all this, we... I, th I feel like the baby out with the bathwater phenomena is really infecting culture sometimes. And it's the final might... secret of the Illuminati. Which is? Well, you have to find that out for yourself. <laughs> Are you a member yes. of the Illuminati? Uh, you would know, wouldn't know. you, uh. if you were Illuminati. <laughs> I cannot have to ask me twice. deny <laughs> this. You will know. Are you a pope? I suppose. Are you a uh, saint? Are you? What labels do you apply to yourself? What labels have other people applied to you, whether in a pejorative mm -hmm. way to limit you, to knock you down, to say that you are, we're in the example of the manosphere, you're a male rights yes. activist. You're on a podcast talking about divine masculinity, and you have the weakest limpest wrist I've ever seen, man. And you got pictures of yourself wearing dresses and looking like a floozy, dangling a gun, like you're uh, uh, disgusted by it, like it's the most obscene penis thing, and you're just <laughs> icky, ew, gross. Come on, take a breath, man. Relax a little bit. <laughs> No one, no entity, no organization has that grip on reality, that mm. control on external things, on sky clock, on whether mm. the sun rises or sets. And now the idea that 1945, America... In the morning, the sun set in the east and in the west because of bomb going off in a desert. And then we have 1947, the Roswell incident. And then we have this idea of aliens, little green men. Mm -hmm. And then Skillet sings a song about alien youth. And now it's like Christians are aliens to this world. Mixed metaphors, man. Mm -hmm. Mixed metaphors. We mix metaphors for comedic effect because of the absurdity, yes. right? Yes. We don't mix metaphors in a serious manner. And if it's clean your room, wash your penis, clean your room, wash your penis, that's sort of a script to follow. Mm -hmm. And if a young man has the cleanest penis untouched and shined. <laughs> the tidiest and room. The tidiest room. Is the tooth fairy going to show up every night and leave quarters <laughs> under his pillow? Yeah. Like, what do you expect to happen? This that is... could be a very profound, uh, call it like a mythological psyop, like the, the tooth fairy, you know, take good care of your teeth. You'll get a little dollar, or a, a nickel or something. What if we created this mythological figure that's like, if your room is clean and you may be visited by the lobster of order or something you know <laughs> we can create that that narrative and mm -hmm. with uh with santa claus i mean are we creating right. another mythological structure i had mm -hmm. received christmas presents from my parents mm -hmm. from santa claus from jesus christ and sometimes the easter bunny whose yeah. presents arrived late right. from the basket right, right we have these uh two pillars of Easter and Christmas, the birth of Christ, the death of Christ, mm. and everything in between there is just waiting to have a, an Easter celebration or Christmas celebration. Interesting. It's not a very fun way 
to live when <laughs> every day is a waiting day. I'm mm. waiting. I'm on the bench. I'm waiting. This is sort of the message to young men. You're on the bench. Coach has got you on the bench. You're going to remain on the bench. When are you going to stand up and go on the field, take the ball, and run with it? Or if it's mm -hmm. soccer, kick the ball. It's like, what are the rules of the game that you're playing in that scenario? And know that not every rule applies in every situation. And if there are 12 rules to live by, and you're not living by the Ten Commandments, you're still going to hell, even with a clean penis and a tidy room. Or one steps forward, one step back. <laughs> right. Yes. And that's the teen sex comedy genre of horror films where if you're getting frisky, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, it, it, that's priming right there. It's life and right. death right there. Yeah. It's it's the, the Thanatos principle and the Eros principle, yes. but there's also the Logos, the ultimate reality. Mm. There are so many ideas to explore, and I've only touched the surface of some of those ideas. Yes. Well, I, I would like to propose maybe sometime in the near future, we can dedicate an entire episode to Robert Anton Wilson and with the trilogy July you know, it's funny. 23rd on his day <laughs> excellent the uh the the AI caption generating mm -hmm. device that I like to use for these videos they misspelled the Illuminatus they called it the Illuminatis with an I and I caught that like after the fact possessive like, ownership man. yes I was like oh man the inner right. grammar nerd did not see this and that I was very, <laughs> I was very, is very wise that's a very keen and astute uh observation and recognition of the limitations of a technology <laughs> we are wizards and we write in cursive and that photograph cannot be scanned and optically recognized for the text that it is because a human hand wrote it in a calligraphic cursive unique style mm. of pen and weight. And uh, there's a whole area of study of like looking at penmanship mm. and then trying to determine the qualities of the individual who wrote the note or the, whatever it is. Like their biometric uh, fingerprinting. Trying to determine that data. And when we intentionally create our own hyper sigils with our own video editing and audio editing skills, and then we sort of have an automated process to assist us with this. We never get the results that we can achieve by putting in the hard work of thankless labor to edit videos. Right. And that reflects back on a Saturday night where it just breathes and it just goes mm -hmm. as long as it needs to go without censorship, without editing. And it becomes, it becomes a comedy act when we begin to put bleep and censorship over certain words that are said mm. seemingly at random. It changes the tone and the intention and it makes yes. it an absurdist comedy act of this is ridiculous. The bleep is the realm of the imaginal. Like last night, what the bleep do we know? What the bleep do we know? Yeah. Have you seen Last that, night, that uh, strange film? Yeah, no, that's a, you know, it's a great work of philosophy to question uh, religious structures and, and this mm -hmm. point. But with the bleep itself, I just have to mention, if anyone hasn't seen it, the Puss in, in, in Boots movie um, has a scene where this, this dog is telling jokes. And it's, it happens uh -huh. a couple times. He's the most innocent little chihuahua looking scruffy uh yeah. lap dog kind of character perito and he has the opportunity to tell some jokes and he comes off as very innocent and he's uh -huh. like a very traumatized abused little little dog yes and they throw in these bleeps and of course you don't know what he's saying mm -hmm. but that opens up that gives you that invitation the imagination like, well, of what, what is the, the worst possible is? thing he yeah. could have said <laughs> and that's back to spongebob in the episode yeah. of uh, behind the, dolphin. The, Daddy, the dolphin sound oh, of the gloss on <laughs> over the language yeah. because patrick and spongebob discovered graffiti language and they begin to pronounce the uh 
the barbaric language of the unspoken tongue. These are the things you should never say aloud. It's like you're opening the cryptonomicon and you're invoking mm -hmm. and God forms and angels and demons and magics beyond your understanding and ability to contain in a vessel and a jar and a genie bottle, whatever it is. And then they associate it with dolphin sounds. Yeah, that was that's hilarious. See, that's, that's a great way to merge that's the absurd. Be an Illuminati yeah. symbolism, <laughs> John Lilly water tank. Unspoken. Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> so right. there's um a story in the Book of Mormon where Christ mm -hmm. is visiting the Americas, the Nephites and the Lamanites, and yeah. there's a scene, a scene <laughs> where he is speaking to a selective group which is mm -hmm. a very common theme the selected the, the the chosen ones right and essentially he's getting to the idea that what's been spoken here can never be repeated it cannot be written down it is right an experience you had to be there man you what just happens had, just in vegas stays in vegas yeah. <laughs> in city. and um as a segue you know we've uh we've almost gone for about 90 minutes and I don't want to land this plane in any particular way, but right. I do want to invite you, if we're thinking about calligraphy and our unique mm -hmm. spark of divinity, which I don't know, I, I think speaking with you, Alan, you've brought out um, some kind of waxing poetic archetype within me that I love to let out loose whenever I possibly can. So I Like Dr. Seuss, let it loose. Let it Everything loose. is a rhyme, iambic pentameter, and yes, these yes. Uh, dramatic Shakespearean sonnets of love and death and tragedy masks and grimacing uh, expressions. And that's sort of what my website says mm. at the Alan top. Marcus. Like Dr. how, well, go, you know, go there and read on the top. What is, what is the description? We'll leave it up to them. AlanMarcus.com. In a sense, in a sense, essentially, I want to ask you two questions in no particular order. Mm. Do they need to be answered? They don't need to be answered at all. In fact, we might um, have a response with more questions and therefore our exponential gnosis will continue onward, which would be great. I want to ask you about opposition. Uh, mm -hmm. I know the mainstream media, the MSM, has been uh, right. Flip quite that over, a and you get WSW. Get the WSW. Yes. So that's my first question. We're gonna flipping like the, put a flipping the script. In that. You're gonna flip the script here. The second question: If we're flipping the script, I'm glad you said that because that was literally what I was gonna try to ask you about. How? What signature would Brain you like to like you weaving? You've graced the local listens podcast, and I, I I refer to it as like the thing. Like I'm okay. so happy to come here and listen and share. And so when we think about flipping the script, you have the MSM and the WSW. Mm -hmm. People get to sign on. They get to sign on and leave their unique signature unfiltered for X amount of hours. I think uh, what was the longest stream here? We've had uh, over a 12-hour stream. That was not an active stream. The <laughs> stream didn't end, so that was sort Excellent. of the joke that the the no one pressed the button to end it. Mm, okay. I think the longest we've gone. Well, okay, so we had intended early on within like episode 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 to try and you know keep it under two and a half to three hours. Mm. And then when we invited Sean SB Elder back to the show we had talked to him in months and months and months mm -hmm. from rx only picture show so he had a lot to say we didn't want to shut him up so that stretch the time oh, the running it. time yes and then it got to the point where i was making introduction videos to sort of create kind of a wacky whimsical strange unsettling mm -hmm tone for what would unravel and then we're like well we need to have intermissions if the dr doolittle movie is too long we need to put an intermission at some point to mm -hmm. sort of cap off something and then just unwind and whatever after that people who want to tune in for the focus discussion can do that and it's three hours is a long time 
but we still have more thoughts and things and grievances to air and yes. uh, expressions to make. And we kind of let that go. And as you've said previously, where there is this sort of, we're, we're fighting against the clock because we're going to set it to be, you know, and we want it to be Stick under to nine minutes, two hours, <laughs> keep it tight, keep it tight mm -hmm. for a lot of people like you and me, it takes us 90 minutes to get warmed up, to sort of get our thoughts synchronized and lined up. And that's where we do the live recording because we're now we're in the middle of it. We're in the thick of it. And this is where we want to be. But it took a lot of prep work, a lot of heavy lifting, a lot of exercise, a lot of opposition to talking about certain things. You have a group and everybody has a favorite topic but then we don't say, well, I don't ever want to talk about that thing, but here's this joker bringing it up again to try to put in his thing into it. And it's yeah. like, it's a weave. It's not a debate. There's no it's I and weave. Impromptu uh, improvisation mm. where we are exploring concepts and ideas, especially those that we haven't touched upon yet. Many of us have spoken together in a public setting for hours and hours, and maybe we've exhausted certain topics off the top of our head. So mm -hmm. we're digging deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into our notes and things and bringing them forth. So again, long form conversation and focus on a train of thought for long enough to let it grow through a cold winter mm. to see seeds that were planted in previous streams begin to grow. And when a tree begins to bud and blossom, that's one thing. And if we're trying to grow an apple pear, we can't take an apple pear seed and plant that and then have a tree that bears fruit. There's a grafting process that takes place where humans in their infinite knowledge will need to go through a process of taking another branch from another tree to put it on the roots to graft it together perhaps a rib a rib mm -hmm. a mcrib a shamrock <laughs> shake if we can celebrate every holiday with a mcdonald's happy meal <laughs> Oh man. And a beanie baby toy. Oh, the beanie babies. To answer your question from earlier about my thoughts of allergies and pollen and mm -hmm. systems and terrain theory or whatever it is. And I mentioned Robert Anton Wilson again because I was reading a lot of books that were above my level, trying to stretch my mind. I happened upon Robert Anton Wilson's Cosmic Trigger book, mm -hmm. which was the perfect level of metaphysics and mysticism and Sufi poetry and sciences and thoughts of uh, Alistair Crowley mm. and spookiness and things that I should not be thinking about. Mm outside of the context of the Carmen's music video for a witch's invitation to say, don't drink the tea. I can't help but Tarot. Alistair. <laughs> yes. And it's Robert Anton Wilson who, to me, showed how he could combine all these ideas into a book project to sort of draw out the boundaries and say, the elephant appears from this angle in this way and from this other angle, from this other religious perspective, from this other sociological perspective, from this caste system, from this Brahmin, from this street urchin, all of these perspectives on reality together combined show us the interacting processing of the gears and the wheels and the systems that for some reason, in some way, that is a mystery to us, all began happening instantaneously in the middle of their operation to repeat itself in a pattern. You have all these gears 
that are already built, already existing, already moving. Hmm. And then you're asking the question of, well, what is space? What is time? What is human linearity, birth to death? It's that little tilde swivel swirl between a date on a tombstone, pizza, pineapple, cheese, mm, gluten-free, no thank you. Mm-hmm. All of these mixed metaphors, commercial advertising, ideas primed in our minds to show us and do the imagineering for us. This is what Disney does. They paint the pictures and animate the images. And it it's a series of still frames, 24 still frames together, played back quickly, and your mind sees motion where there is none. Mm-hmm. That is the illusion. That is the illusion that we can see if we hit pause and it stops playing. But all of these things came to be instantaneously at once, interacting, processing with the fractals, reflecting all the other systems, getting the information from this system to then react to it in real time at the same time, instantaneously. And we're asking about causation (laughs) being correlated to a seasonal flu a sniffle, a sneeze, a cold, a wintertime, dust bunnies, pollen in the air. Now I'm coughing and sneezing and wheezing and whooping and not feeling very good. And I was scratching my throat and I didn't want to go to school this morning anyway, mom. It's too cold. My boots are wet. <laughs> well, I we have certain, uphill both ways. We have certain responsibilities and to understand the Zen an art of motorcycle maintenance. Mm, excellent. You're, book. you're riding the motorcycle. You're on the highway. You have to change the filter. You have to fill the gas. You got to keep it going. And that's the greater question of well, the great reset. How can you reset a game when all the players are not consenting to resetting it? Mm. I've got all the wealth I need. I have a beautiful home and children and family. Why would I give all this up to go back to ground zero there's another metaphor. There's another idea. What is that moment in time? That. 2001. All of our attention brought to New York City. I don't care about New York City. I don't care about Hollywood. I live in Minnesota. I live in my local reality. And now we're invoking ideas of non-locality mm. and the mystery of chicken or egg. What came first, the apple or the pear? And how did they combine in this chaotic way to confuse you between, well, it has a cold texture and crispness of a Bartlett pear, but more a shape of an apple. And the seed formation, you can slice it horizontally or vertically, and the apple will appear different in its bisection. Hmm. It's not a two-dimensional thing. It's not a four-dimensional thing. And our senses deceive us consistently any way you slice it any way you slice it so i look behind you and i see the poster the visual representation two and the three the holy grail in the middle of it Mm -hmm. can you see the faces simultaneously with the grail or do you have to shift your perception from the grail to see the hole to see the grail to see the two faces to see the kissing to see the teeth on the on the mouth. I wish it was a little smooth, but you know it's interesting with Alex Gray. Right. He's showing us the gray area. And right. What I what what I've enjoyed about this conversation and when I reflect on our past conversations and when I anticipate our future conversations, uh, I can rest right. assured that um Although, you know, hindsight's 2020 and 2020, our lives were totally transformed and the, perhaps the new, the new normal is a good thing. And perhaps we could be optimistically Zen about this, even though perhaps Zen defeats the the purpose of optimism. It's just, uh, it is what it is, I suppose, but it is what it is, Alan. And depends on what the definition of is. is. Yes. Yes. 
perhaps we can save that for an, another time. Let's approach the final question here. Okay. When people sign on to these Zoom calls and they sign off, mm-hmm. we're leaving behind some kind of residue. And, you know, this will be posted on all the, all the YouTube and the Spotify and the Apple and, you know, everywhere that we could be embarrassed we're gonna we'll uh willingly and you know happily share it out we'll uh put Mm -hmm. links in the description um signing on to this zoom call and signing off to it i feel like it's almost like maybe it's herodotus it's like you know you step in the same river twice that's impossible Mm -hmm. right you don't you uh enter a zoom call but you leave a much different zoom call and so I wanted to ask you, in no particular way is this a question that is supposed to be like, oh, will, will you give our audience some type of advice? Um, will you tell them to clean their room or, you know, mm-hmm. scrub their parts? What I, what I want to ask you is, if you could leave your signature in some form, if you could advise yourself in the, in the process what kind of message bubbles up to the surface here? You know, we've been working within this mm-hmm. uh, symbolic cauldron and uh, we're going to ladle out one last bit of gravy here. So what do you think uh, as we land this plane, where is our landing gear going to make contact here? What do you think, Alan? Intention is everything. And when we intend to meet consistently in a ritual manner of agreeing to meet at a time and place every Saturday night, whether we're feeling like it a half hour before, whether our stomach is in a, uh, and we're Mm -hmm. just like, man, I need to sit and just, uh, excrete just get it all out of me because i'm going to stand here for six hours man i can't be taking potty breaks Mm. the intention is so important and to intend for the greatest good the highest good the most noble of intentions to playfully rib on each other to say the the forbidden words that the dolphins would utter in glossolalia over our mouths as we're speaking and hide from the sensors and to confuse the uh, AI algorithm to try to turn my language, my voice into typed text in a text document for us to then read a transcript of we can rest assured that the spark of creativity and playfulness of a child in an adult setting where we are impromptu, improvisational, stand up, sit down comedians of obscene gestures in a public secret society in a bohemian powwow grove play on words frightening everybody with obscene and strange audio visual collages talking about things that are impolite to speak about to not be completely shy or bashful about it because we can't beat around the bush any longer the year is 2023 we are approaching end game versus singularity skynet systems of the world powers and principalities designed to grip our lives and keep us imprisoned volunteering for quarantine of 40 days how long are you going to remain living in fear of death when you've not even lived a day in your life. I don't offer unsolicited advice. I try to keep my mouth quiet 
and try to listen more for nuance, for emotion, for authenticity. And then to return that favor back and forth with a group of people who are 86. They are the black sheep of the family. They're the people that aren't welcome anywhere else to open up a Zoom room and say, you know, you're welcome, but there's also the, the asterisk in the corner. Like yeah, some people are welcomed more consistently than others because <laughs> there are only so many, we're, we're, we're speaking truthfully about limitations mm -hmm. of a round nature. table. There are only 12 seats at a round table. We could probably fit 40 people in a Zoom room. Is that logistically going to work out? And the, the, balance of the voices and the flavors and the cauldron for the gravy sometimes someone wants to put in ice cream sometimes people want to put in tacos sometimes people want to put in sardines that could work we're producing a public live stream that will be tasted and savored and sampled by a wide variety of people that production role behind the scenes of choosing a title, of choosing colors and flavors and patterns and music and words, that's the art. That's the magic aspect of this hyper sigil experiment in psychology and intention and goal setting and trying to attract the right attention and dispel the nonsense and propaganda and garbage and bad ideas and to do so gently and respectfully absolutely without condemning anybody or putting them in a spotlight with a gun pointed at their head to say this is your execution because you've said the wrong thing mm -hmm. I've said the wrong thing and many times I've had to bite my tongue. I've well, gotten there, really yeah. fast and loose on public streams and to be embarrassed by that, just to, oh, mm. to have to get through the uncomfortable stuff to reach the end of the stream to then sign up publicly and then just to sit there for an hour or two or three or four after a live stream to try to unwind because it, 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 there's there's an energy mm -hmm. there's a channel there's a magical current call it a web if you will yes and for people who have experienced the high strangeness and spookiness that entails what we've conjured up kind of in a chaos manner way kind of in a witchy wizardy sort of spooky this is the art and the science of the strange things that we've done and how it manifests in people's dreams and waking life and the decisions they've made that's a huge responsibility mm -hmm. we take that as seriously as we can but it's always tongue-in-cheek wink and nod insider language inside jokes We've built kind of a vocabulary and a shortcut to ideas. And at that point, we have to say, oh, slow down, slow down. What does that word mean to you right now in this instance? Because we cannot take for granted that I understand the word that you just said that I've not heard before. And you don't know the word that I've said. And maybe I've used a word that I've heard, but I used it incorrectly because it rhymed at the time. So it felt right. Mm -hmm. It just felt and that's, right. And that's going to wrap up our discussion with where we began earlier this afternoon, talking about intention of artists putting codes and symbols into media. And there is the satanic panic mindset of seeing the devil in every detail and seeing fear and spells and bad intentions in the media kind of a vigilant citizen sort of perspective 
on Illuminati symbolism and triangles are evil and stars are evil and pentagrams are bad and all wizards are warlocks and all witches are bitches and evil and assholes and all this. I don't like it. I don't understand it. Stop doing it. When an artist decides that they like another artist and they're inspired by a great work of art, a David Bowie, a genius director, M. Night Shalom, Alama, Ding Dong, <laughs> with the twist endings, mm -hmm. and the I See Dead People, Haley Joel Osment Kid, and Steven Spielberg, and the Animaniacs, and all of these ideas and thought forms and creations. And then we are asked, well, what do you want to do when you grow up? Oh, I want to be a firefighter. I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a film director. I want to have a radio station. I want to start a podcast. I want to be a celebrity. I want everybody on the internet to know my website and set it as their homepage. It's an absurd thing. Hmm. We, we acknowledge that. And in the journey of the artist to convey a message, an emotion, a thought, something that I've learned and in my own writing, fiction, nonfiction, storytelling, stand-up comedy, sit-down comedy, uh, imagining a role-playing scenario, being a dungeon master, being a wizard, role-playing. Oh, well LARPing, done, by the way. Well done. RPG. Yeah. Those those who know, uh, just Rising from the Ashes podcast, uh, LARP, um, you just got to look it up. It's the Dragon Lovers. Excellent. So the question of intentionality and to what degree can... Uh, a Holly weirdo producer, screenplay writer, script writer, a uh, guy working on a SpongeBob TV show, put it in Illuminati symbolism. And then we go back and look at it and, and see what we want to see. Eyes wide shut, society, Marvel movies, Star Wars, whatever it is. And then we see the patterns and we're like, oh, that's a bad apple. That's a bad actor. That's a bad intention. They're casting a spell. Was it there? Was it planted by Tavistock Institute, Laurel Canyon, CIA, ABC, FBI, Mossad, KGB, MI5, MI6, you know, governments of the world unite against you know, the world order, OMG, LOL, 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 RFOL, Lowler Skates, you know, cyber speak, uh, you know, what does it mean? An artist will find a pattern in nature and reflect it into their work. If they're looking for the hero's journey and they find a Joseph Campbell and they get a screenwriting book and they say, here's the formula. And then they take the formula and they begin to build a scaffolding of an outline of a story of a, of a grandiose tale of an epic fantasy of the Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, Star Trek, science fiction, science fact, fantasy, magical realism to the grittiest reboot of Batman Begins, predictive programming, who's guilty of what. Invoking archetypes, symbols, meanings, correspondences, and assembling together into a narrative from beginning to end with dialogue, costume, and drama and music that is magic that is spellcraft that is what the industry does and that will prime people to have thoughts about things to see the world differently to experience juxtapositions of flavors that they would not have put together to confabulate and confuse and we see that with people pushing back against a so-called woke agenda or misgendering or miscasting or changing skin tones and colors of superhero costumes and all these fine details that we have an association with. Home stretch, final answer, final jeopardy. The artist inspired by muses, daemons, geniuses, mm. whatever it is, through dream work, through meditation, through mysticism, through woo, through Carl Castaneda, through altered states of consciousness, the ASCs, peyote, alcohol, drugs, caffeine, cocaine, whatever it is, all of these things influence ideas. And where do they come from? I don't know. 
I'm reflecting back on your ideas, which are reflected back on ideas that we had in past episodes from videos from a decade ago on YouTube that remain on the public record. All of these things, and we're trying to say, well, who thought of it first? Where did it come from? What was the intention? I'm saying an artist alone in his room at a typewriter typing out a story will invoke the muses, will have the craft and the tool set craft a story to write it out to know a beginning a middle and an end the denouement the emotional residence and they will intend for those things and then they'll release the work into the world and then jerks like us with our opinions our thoughts our critiques our criticisms will dig into it mm -hmm. and see what we want to see sometimes find parallels synchronicities it'll interact with our own lives It'll change our preferences for Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola, depending on what it is at the time. It'll change our taste palette, our flavor palette. It's interacting, processing, mm -hmm. feedback loops. And that is where we have to be literate in symbols and signs and images and tastes and flavors and have an emotional dictionary available to say, well, how is this making me feel right now? Mm -hmm. and I'm having conflicted thoughts. And it's at that nexus point of kind of kind of aroused, kind of repulsed, kind of weirded out, kind of intrigued at our most vulnerable moment. <laughs> you know, two hours into a conversation at our most most vulnerable moment when we're when we're leaning in and we're speaking really solid, whispering the secrets that we've kept for so long. And then we freeze and we get stage fright and we get nervous and we're like, oh, take us, take a few steps back. We, we've crossed a line here. We've, mm -hmm. we've, we've touched, uh, touched a forbidden touchstone and we are dealing with forces far larger than we're able to contain. Mm -hmm. And we realize again that. We're just two dudes with stinky armpits, sweating it up here, filling in with flatulence, probably not even wearing pants. <laughs> They'll never know. <laughs> Do a hand check, you know, keep your hands up where we can see them. And then you do the weave mudra, and then you can do the spider sign. Where How does that go? Where you make a, ever make a spider with your hands? You're like shadow puppets. <laughs> nice. Well, we are asking better questions, probably not providing the best possible answers. I, I think hope there's um, some sustenance there, something to chew on. For there's people. plenty of nutritional value. I mm -hmm. wouldn't doubt that for a second. And the best part is that it's a shared meal, which mm -hmm. whoever's listening is participating. They're actively engaged in you know we it, it's going to be hard to title this 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 episode alan i'm i'm sure you've dealt with that before i'm 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 uh certain that you've uh experienced that kind of like we solved that problem by titling the show before it goes beforehand live, yes. and then trying to weave in the title yes. topics into it to make it make sense to force so it into when you describe that moment when we're closing out this zoom call and i and i sit back and i'm like what just happened but I rest assured that I feel like your descriptions of this artistic process and the art the artistic value of participation and in reflecting. I'm imagining that whatever we inspire in other people from our conversation, from the other conversations in this family of podcasts and content creators and this uh i think you would call it the public secret society that was that was pretty funny i rest assured that although i'm going to struggle to title this episode um it is the mysterious quality of our discussions and of these ideas that could go on forever that really keeps me going and i've drastically changed since um i met these uh weaving spiders and i'm happy to be uh Happy to be chatting with yourself tonight, Alan. And 
when we think about the welcome in the spiders, you know, is there any particular way we could welcome people who, um, you know, they've made it so far along this, mm -hmm. uh, this MP3 track, this MP4 track, how can we welcome them in any sort of way as, as we exit? <laughs> With open arms and a stick of deodorant as needed, not quite a <laughs> body spray. You know, yes. it's you know we we joke about the the humor and the hygiene of the mind and keeping it clean, but also mm. being filthy when necessary. And absolutely, Get and then inviting balance. inviting all kinds of all kinds of people from all walks of life, all skin colors, all tones, mm. whatever. You know, we're we're trying to reach beyond. Yes, and we're we're realistic of saying we we know what we look like. We're just you know we we know what our kind of audience is. We kind of know just by looking at each other if we're going to relate or not. Mm. We kind of have that sense. That's the visual aspect of you might see a thumbnail of a of a video. You might click play and you might skip to an hour in and you might see eight different faces on the screen and you might not see anybody that looks like you or talks like you or that sort of thing. And you might think, well, I don't feel welcome. Mm. There is the illusion of seeing our faces and voices juxtaposed together. The illusion that we are all of one mind and of one thought and in agreement. Mm-hmm. The truth of the matter is we are always holding our tongue and pushing up our glasses. Well, actually, you spelled that <laughs> word incorrectly and you pronounced it terribly. It's pronounced Illuminatus, actually. Right. Right. So, again, welcome with open arms, mm. love and patience humility and humor and knowing that even having people in chat wielding a monkey wrench with mm -hmm. the responsibility of of saying important things and staying focused on the higher things mm -hmm. the beautiful things the creativity of creating a live experience event where it is forming a community of people. We struggled with that saying, we don't want to moderate chat rooms because people are difficult to corral and keep on topic. Mm. What is the topic? The mystery. Everything is mm -hmm. a topic. The boundless. Boundless and endless. Mm. And to wrap this up in a fine bow and tuck in all the hanging chads and make sure all the votes are counted and every voice is heard is <laughs> a very difficult thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's an art and a science. And either I fall asleep, you fall asleep, or the battery dies, or something against our will stops the conversation. We will continue every Saturday night as long as we have a Saturday night to speak. Every Saturday night, YouTube weaving spiders' webs. Find a Telegram to track, you there. go on social media, hashtag weaving spiders welcome. There's a huge silent majority that listens and you jake loco may have been that very person that listened for a very long time until finally you got trapped in the web and the spotlight <laughs> was placed on you and we were like who 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 is this <laughs> owl <laughs> the alchemical web uh well i welcome it with open arms and uh I want to welcome you back onto the podcast anytime. Um, what a great way. I mean, I, I feel like I did take a spring break and come back. So the intermission gave me a lot to think about. And I'm so happy that we were able to do this on a special day. We covered a lot of ground. There's still a lot of ground left to cover. AlanMarcus.com. It's more than just your name. It's your domain. And uh, thank you for sharing 
your insights with us tonight and uh for everyone listening love you guys spiders rock on and uh wishing everyone peace and prosperity on this day adios thank you alan